Hello! Now we're going to talk about derivatives of some exponential functions. Well, maybe the easiest exponential function is 2 to the x. So let's see if we can take the derivative of 2 to the x. Well, um, this is going to equal the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 to the x plus h minus 2 to the x all over h. Okay, well, I'm not real sure what to do here, but um, I, can, I can simplify this a bit or factor, factor it a bit. So I have limit as h goes to 0 of 2 to the x times 2 to the h minus 2 to the x all over h. Uh-huh. And now I can factor out a 2 to the x. So I have limit as h goes to 0 of, let's see, um, 2 to the x times 2 to the h minus 1 all over h. Huh. Now I have a factor of 2 to the x. There's no h's in here. So I can, I can pull that outside of the limit no problem. And let's see what happens here. So now this is equal to 2 to the x times the limit as h goes to 0 of 2 to the h minus 1 all over h. Now this is kind of strange. So I have the function I started with times uh, some value here that's not, not dependent on x. It's a constant uh, assuming that this limit exists, this limit right here. Hmm, I'm not real sure what to do here. Uh, I suppose we could make a table. So let's make a table to investigate this as we take the limit as h goes to 0 from the left. So the first thing we'll plug in is uh, minus 1, uh, and we get out 0.5. And then we'll plug in minus 0.1, and we get out uh, something like 0.67. Well, now we plug in minus 0.01, we get out something like 0.691. And now we plug in uh, minus 0.001, we get out something like 0.6929. And now we plug in uh, negative 0.0001, and we get out something like 0.6931. And so this is a table representing our limit from the left. Let's, so now it's time to investigate the limit from the right. Okay, so here we go. We're going to plug in h values as they come from the right. And so we plug in 1, and we get out something like 1. We plug in 0.1, we get out something around 0.7177. We plug in 0.01, we get out something like 0.6956. We plug in 0.001, we get out something around 0.6934. We plug in 0 0.0001, we get out something like 0 0.6932. And so this is our limit from the right. And if we think about this value and the value that we got before 0 0.6931, 0 0.6932, we see we're converging on something. And I'm going to be a little bit, of, bit coarse here. So we see that limit as h goes to 0, 2 to the h minus 1 all over h. It's around, it's, it's around 0.7. Hmm. Well, why don't we keep on going, and now we'll try 3 to the x. So now let's look at uh, 3 to the x. So we're going to take the derivative with respect to x of 3 to the x. Okay, so let's see. This is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 all over h of 3 to the x minus uh, x plus h minus 3 to the x. Okay, that looks good. Well, um, I can do something there. So I have limit as h goes to 0 of h, 3 to the x times 3 to the h minus 3 to the x. Aha. Uh -huh. Now I can factor out a 3 to the x. So this is equal to limit as h goes to 0 of 3 to the x times 3 to the h minus 1 all over h. Ha. Huh. But there's no h's in this factor here. There's no h's here, so I can, I can pull that factor out of the limit, and I get 3 to the x times limit as h goes to 0 of 3 to the h minus 1 all over h. And this is really wild because, look, here I have the original function, and then it's times what it looks to be a constant, assuming this limit exists, because there's no x's 
on this in this factor here. There's no x's here. So um, that's that's kind of strange. Oh man, another limit that seems hard. I'm I I guess we'll make another table. So here we've made a table. We have h uh, on the left hand side and 3d dh minus 1 all over h. We're going to try to investigate what happens when h goes to 0 here. So we're going to start on the left with a minus 1 and we, this is equal to about 2 thirds, all right? And then I plug in minus 0.1 and I see this is equal to uh, 1.0404, huh? And I plug in minus 0.01 and this is, this is approximately 1.0926, huh? This is, I plug in minus 0.001, and this is approximately 1.0980, huh? And now I plug in uh, negative uh, 0.0001, this is approximately uh, 1.0986, huh? Well, what am I supposed to do with this? Well, let's just keep on going. Let's come from the uh, right now. And so um, I plug in one, and I get two out. That looks nice. I plug in 0.1 and I get around 1.1612. I plug in 0.01 and I get something around 1.1047, huh? Plug in 0.01, I get something around 1.0992. I plug in 0.0001 and I get out something around 1.0987, huh? Well, comparing these two tables, I mean, we, it looks like the limit of 3 to the h minus 1 all over h as h goes to 0 is about 1.1. Maybe we should be thinking of this limit as a, as a function of x itself. So really what we've been doing is we've been studying uh, a function f of x equals the limit as h goes to 0 of x to the h minus 1 all over h. And what we've just shown is that f of 2 is around 0.7 and f of 3 is around 1.1. Well, now I have a question. Uh, is there a number that makes f of x 1? We have 2 makes f of x somewhere around 0.7 and uh, 3 makes f of x somewhere around 1.1. Is there a number that makes f of x 1? Now look, if we knew if f of x was continuous, then we can use the intermediate value theorem. Showing f of x is continuous is just, I think, a little beyond the scope of this course. So you're just going to have to trust me that, that there is, in fact, a number. Let's, let's just say there is such a number, and let's talk about it. So this number is between... 2 and 3, it's such that when you take the limit as h goes to 0 of whatever it is, question mark, I guess, to the h minus 1 all over h, it's equal to 1. And it turns out this mysterious number is e equal to 2.718281828. Four five nine zero oh, four five and so on, not repeating. Aha! Uh -huh. So now we can compute a derivative. Let's compute the derivative of e to the x. So this means that when we take the derivative of e to the x, a small miracle happens. This is equal to the limit as h goes to zero of e to the x plus h minus e to the x which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 all over h e to the x times e to the h minus e to the x, which is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the x times e to the h minus 1 all over h. And see, this e to the x has no h's in it, so we can pull it out. This is equal to e to the x times the limit as h goes to 0 of e to the h minus 1 all over h. And if you remember what we just said, e is the number that is chosen so that this limit equals 1. So this is equal to 
e to the x. So the derivative of e to the x with respect to x is, in fact, e to the x. So now we know the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. It's like the simplest derivative ever. We had to get our hands dirty and it wasn't easy getting to this place. But boy, is that cool. All right, let's go do some more math.